basically the idea is that um, uh, there's a, a, a kind of a orphan hacker who's self-taught but very smart like like many hackers that I know and uh, he his job is to sort of uh, be a, a black hat stuff but he he's he's his his moral alignment is definitely gray hat um, but he's hired by a man who suspects his wife of cheating on him and so he hires the main character will to break into his wife's computer to see if there's any suspicious emails or anything not because uh, California is a no-fault state but the guy just wants moral justification for himself and so he he will does that he breaks in quite easily and we show that um, one of my friends helped me come up with this hack. I guess this is this will be kind of a, a spoiler, but you'll dig it. Uh, we came up with this idea of using a Raspberry Pi inside of something like, uh, if we can get it inside of a Pringles can, and they toss the Pringles can onto the roof and just have is the Pringles it, can also a, also a Wi-Fi antenna. Yes. Yeah. So <gasps> using the can oh, as a Wi-Fi. Yeah, can antenna. So it's so I call it a can of worm. And its job is to sit and, and break into the Wi-Fi network and compromise the computer. And since it's so cheap, they just leave it there in 20 years whenever someone discovers it, because who goes on their roof? And then, uh, so he breaks into the wife's computer and finds that she is, in fact, cheating. And the person she's cheating on is with is, this, is the CTO of a major government contractor. And so uh, Will uses that. Uh, uses a phishing email from hers, and this is like the first ten minutes or first twenty minutes. So this is not huge spoilers, but um, Will uses a phishing email from her account, pretending to be her, saying like implying there's going to be sexy pictures in the email. It sends it to the CTO, uses that to compromise his machine, and then compromises his network internally and slurps all their all their stuff. So and then it goes down the rabbit hole from there. Oh yeah, then it gets bad. Yeah. Oh, I, I I like this. Yeah, it's wicked. Uh, I have to I have to admit, uh, um, I Cantena would also be a spoiler for uh, my book. Okay, cool. So we're thinking along the same lines. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, although, have, have you seen the XKCD cartoon about that? I haven't. That might be where my friend got got the idea. He he's the one who gave me the idea. Because he's a huge XKDC, X, XKCD fan. It probably is. That's one of the famous ones. I'll have to ask him about that dirty plagiarist. No, I'm kidding. A lot of us hackers solve things through code, but we also solve it through really incredible uh, social hacks. Yeah, and that's you know, one of the things Larry Wall mentioned in the interviews is that his his favorite hacks are the social ones. Just the, the concept of barriers and walls are, are going away completely on every level. I bought the T2i right after it came out and um, that it was $900. Now you can't buy it. It's it's third generation, I believe, is available at Costco for like $600. And I use this professionally to make commercials, to make music videos. It's It's amazing. I mean, you just, the lenses aren't cheap, but the cameras themselves, I mean, it's exactly what you're talking about. Just the the concept of barriers and walls are are going away completely on every level. Well, and the wild thing is I shot a short film uh, using one of the actors in the root kit called, uh, and the short's called Fidelis. It's on my website. Um, but I shot that on the T2i with, you know, with a, with a Sigma 2814, which is like a, a $600 lens. And... Uh, we showed it in a theater, and it was it was the it was the first movie, and right after that was another movie that was filmed on the red, and you couldn't tell the difference. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they're brilliant. One of the things they did is they took, uh, I think it was the Connect, the Xbox Connect, and attached it to like helicopters, so the helicopters can now fly around, map their own terrain. Then the helicopters started talking to each other. And then they can synchronize and map terrain as they go about different buildings. It's it's wild. I mean, I'm just into like abstract weird stuff, and 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 usually only my geek friends are into the same stuff. I mean, otherwise it's just like I'm I'm interested in everything, so I, I love talking to anybody. But 
for me to actually kind of open up and share with people is it, it takes a certain kind of mind to want to go where I like to go. And usually that's the geeks. So yeah, uh, a lot of my college friends are geeks. A lot, even even uh, my childhood friend was a computer science major. And Not being a, a hacker yourself, um, how, how did you approach uh, researching for the film uh, and you're re really kind of deciding how to write the characters and, and, the, and the plot? And, Keeping things real. <laughs> yeah, my mind works uh, very unusually. Um, I don't. I don't store information very well. My wife is brilliant at memorizing, and I suck at it. So I did very poorly in school. But I do have the ability to absorb massive amounts of information very quickly and kind of integrate it into a cohesive whole. So what I do to study and research is really immerse myself as much as possible in an environment, and mostly. Um, what I did is I listened to just a ton of security, computer security podcasts, read books by hackers or about hackers. Um, a lot of my research was uh, from a podcast called uh, Security Now with a guy named Steve Gibson. And um, that really constituted the foundation of a lot of what I know. Like, like at least two of the hacks that I'm picturing in my mind for the can of worm I described earlier is from that site and, and poor implementations of uh, the MD5 encryption stuff. There's, 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 a, there's a couple problems going on. One is that, is that as our systems become more complex, uh, the likelihood of us making errors on some level increases. Um, one of my friends, there's, there's two forms of flash memory, and one of my friends invented one of them. and. Yeah. And he was telling me that while they were building and designing that Flash, they were working on scales that were so small that they had to uh, build in redundancy because neutrinos would come and break circuits. And so, when you like when you're getting into that level of complexity, where where you really enter things like quantum entanglement, become actual issues that you have to calculate and compensate for, um, the likelihood of an error happening increases. You know, the weird thing is how much of it actually works. Yeah. Like, as complex and staggeringly, mind-bogglingly intricate all this stuff actually is, a lot of it works really well. Like, we, we, uh, I was sitting, there's a, there's a restaurant I like to eat at in, in a city in, in Los Angeles, and I was sitting there eating it, eating, and I had just finished my sandwich, and I was reading Ken Stanley Robinson's uh, book, Green, or Blue Mars, and I realized that that within 50 miles of me, at uh, at Jet Propulsion Labs, there were people driving a robot on Mars that landed itself there. And I was just like, "This is real. This is really happening." And now you have uh, Elon Musk in the news talking about really actually starting a Martian colony and and taking small logical steps to truly get there and make it happen. I just is is wild times we live in, man. Just amazing stuff. Like collaborative video editing over the internet. That's what the heck. I mean, that's just wild. Yeah, and and, and you know what the scary part is? Ninety or maybe even ninety-five percent of the code. You know, and that's not to say we haven't written very much code ourselves, but the vast majority of it. Is building upon existing technologies. Mm -hmm. um, our vid video uh, decoding and rendering and all that framework mm -hmm. already written. That's ten years of development by hundreds of people. Uh, it's called That's GStream. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, we're built on CouchDB, so that provides you know all that replication stuff to replicate the databases among the different computers. The the graphics are all done. Uh, using HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript, uh, using WebKit GTK. I mean, that's, yeah, and that's and that's and that's kind of exactly what I'm what I'm trying to get at in the rootkit is that is that uh, I mean we I call them I call them somewhat offhandedly script kitties, but the the stuff to do most of the hacks that I describe in 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 the movie and that I show in the movie are freely available in a specific distribution of Linux. Like there's actually a, a distribution of Linux made for security professionals that has all of the tools to do anything you want 
uh, sniffing, you know, port sniffing, uh, cracking into stuff. I've watched people do it, and it doesn't take that long. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there were some uh, Wi-Fi cracking tools available for my smartphone. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. And, and I think that's probably the one of the biggest contributions of, you know, the, the uh, open source hacker community. And, the, you know, uh, you've got these pieces of software, these tools, that you can kind of fit them together mm. into whatever new purpose that the original person didn't even think of. People have no idea what their stuff's going to be used for, but the fact that it's open means that it's a tool. Like, I can, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a very good craftsman, so I can't come up with a great analogy, but, but did, did, uh, did the first cavemen imagine skyscrapers when they discovered fire? No, but we've repurposed fire to melt steel, and now we can make skyscrapers. I, my friend was telling me that there's, that there's I thought it was Iceland, that they, it's either theoretical or they're planning it or they've already got it working where they have a plasma torch and they're using a plasma torch to generate electricity by burning garbage. And so the fuel for the torch is actually garbage. And the country is having to import garbage because they've run out of their own. <laughs> I mean, that, it, like I said, it could be theoretical, but I, it, the way he talks is probably is already happening. And it's just wild, like the stuff that we can come up with. Um, and so, and that, I mean, in that, and that spirit is, is what I'd like to cultivate in the rootkit. Yes, like I said, it is about hackers. It is about breaking into things and compromising systems, but it's also about creativity, about, about people who are, or were orphans, uh, using their minds to do things, to, to, to combat what seems to be insurmountable evil and fight it. Yeah, and and quite frankly, that's um, what uh, you know the hacking mindset is all about. I mean, you know, you see something that's you know bad or evil or or, or just whatever it is that's not right about the way the world is, and you don't ask permission; you just go ahead and fix it. Yeah, it was a profound realization to me when I came to the con when I started to realize it. it started. I actually. Uh, it started with uh, a few years ago. I one of my favorite sci-fi authors is a guy named Neil Stevenson. Oh, I've read some of his stuff. Yeah, he he wrote he's a brilliant Cryptonomicon over there. <laughs> his, yeah, Cryptonomicon's probably I think one of his best works, or Diamond Age, but Diamond Age gets a little freaky. Um, but I I had the chance of meeting this guy, and he was he was like a hero. He was he was one of these profound, giant, amazing authors who were writing the most brilliant stuff anybody had seen. And and I met the guy, and I and and I was taller than he was. And it wasn't that I was taller than he was, but it was that it, the man was a human being, and he had physical attributes. He was not a god. He was not a superhuman being. He was not a giant set of computers. He was a man. And it, it was it was truly profound for me that that the the concept that all of the gatekeepers. All of the systems of the world, and that's actually one of his books series called System of the World, but, but all of the, the structures that we've constructed are man-made, which means that they're not infallible, and it also means that they're, they're not concrete. And so when I take this and apply it to myself, I think I don't have to wait for Warner Brothers to give me the okay. I can go make my own movie without them. I can distribute it now without them. Or, or in the case of hackers, we don't need to wait for the government to say it's okay to do these things. We can go do it ourselves. In Larry Wall's case, I don't need to wait for the company to give me permission to, to take Pearl out and distribute it. I can do it myself. And so I think that idea of just enabling people and, and telling them it's okay to make the world, like, like there's an argument that I hear a lot is that, you know, that's the way the world is. And, and I believe the world is the way we make it. And I think that the tools are, are in our hands to make the world better. We can make it, we can make it better so that we don't have to occupy, so that, they're, so that everybody has what they need. I mean, these, it's, it's not a technological problem anymore. It's not an information problem anymore. 
and I'm waiting for for brilliant people like yourself to come up with solutions to to the problems. Like maybe I want to make a movie with with uh, you know somebody in India. I can do that with your software real time. There's nothing in the way anymore. Not even space time. Like you your 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 software eliminates distance. And if we can do that, I mean, you, you, there, there was an awesome TED talk about, about distance and, and teleporting and transporting and how we've effectively done that with video. So, so I, I, I just think that, I think that we live in a world with, with no more boundaries, except the ones that we create for ourselves. And with a Raspberry Pi for 50 bucks and you, that you can plug into a TV that you can now find yeah, on the street um, for 50 bucks, you can become a computer coder. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people just don't even realize um, what they're capable of if they try. Um, you know, th there, there's nothing that I'm doing right now, be it with filmmaking or with, uh, uh, you know, developing a real-time video editor or anything else that, you know, just an average person who really put their mind to it couldn't do. That's it. I mean, that's, that's you know, I, I don't need, you know, Hollywood saying, okay, you can now start making a movie. Yeah, yeah. Who am I? I'm a guy who sat down and did the research, yeah, and I have the will to get up and do it. Uh, Just like you. So that's that's kind of the underlying principle of, of Eric is, I don't think you could have gotten this movie made in the old system. No, no. In fact, I, uh, I have a producer, and the man's brilliant, and I love him. Uh, one of the things that he has a big issue with is that I don't use... Uh, there's no explosions. Um, there's one punch thrown in the movie. There is no... Uh, there's no nudity. I mean, I may be not selling the movie or the opposite. I don't know. The women I'm using are beautiful, and you may want to see them naked, but that's not what this movie's about. Uh, but, and there's no stars. And so those are the things that they use to sell movies internationally, and the root kit doesn't have any of them. So if I had, if I had been willing to compromise on those areas... Well, quite frankly, they, root kit's got a huge international appeal. Yeah, I think it does. I really... You know, and the wild thing is a lot of the backers are If you're, trying, from if you're reaching, you know... The hacker community, they're very international. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and a lot of them have gotten behind yeah. and, and, um, and backed. But, them. you know, it's not how you sell the movie internationally. Right. Right. The, one of the cool things that I'm, I, I don't know, I probably shouldn't even say this on Google+, Plus, but I'm going to yeah. say it anyway because um, that's, that's the way I think. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm planning on doing is I'm, I'm pretty sure China's not going to want to distribute this. And so what, I will, what I'm willing to do is to have a friend of mine who is a professional Chinese translator translate the movie into Chinese and then torrent it into China for free just because hey. I think it's awesome and I want him to see it. Because it's not for me, it's not, I mean, I want to make enough money so that I can make my next movie, but the function purpose of this movie isn't to make money. It's to get the idea out to empower people. But still, please donate because if, with no money, it doesn't get made at all. <laughs> you know, a certain amount of money, in order to you know n not kill yourself making your art, and to have enough money to keep making films to, to, to make it. it a very sustainable uh, way to tell stories. That's it. Um, yep. But at the same time, you know, the reason why all of us are telling stories is not just because we want to be wildly wealthy, it's because we want to say something to to people and, and, and really connect with, you know, fans and, and, uh, and to say something important in the world. Yeah, that's it. That's it, exactly. I couldn't have and said it better. So money is a factor. I mean, I need money to make it, but, but uh, I, I'm... If... It won't be me who's suing people if that happens. I, I mean that that, that if if I, I'm going to try and make sure that any sales contract I put into people, this I mean, the way the way the MPA has been doing things is absurd. And and if you want to steal it, you know, I don't like that. 
but I I understand. And I'd rather you see it than not. Guys, this guy has a great attitude right here. <laughs> he he should, he should, he definitely deserves our support for this. <laughs> Yay! One of the cool things that I'm really proud of is that is that uh, the all of the Good. hackers in in the rootkit uh, they're not actually ninjas, and in a firefight or in a fist fight they would lose. So, they don't win in fights when they when it's they get attacked. In my book. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. But one of the things that really irritates me about Hollywood when they make movies about hackers is that they're really good at fighting. Like somehow they can just pick up a gun and shoot one. And I've picked up a gun and shot one, and I'm an okay shot. But uh, any trained Marine near the, it, from the Marine base I live near would come into my house, and, and I would not pose a threat in any way, even if I knew they were coming. Yeah. The other thing is, um, my wife and I actually had this debate, and, and uh, is that uh, she was saying she grew up in the Bay Area. She actually was raised in Cupertino uh, and learned to drive in Apple headquarters parking lot. But um, she said that none of her geek friends looked like Angelina Jolie from Hackers. And so we had the argument, and I was, I was seriously considering casting in this direction, that, <laughs> that, that the actor should not be beautiful women until I started meeting the actresses who I cast. And the wild thing is, they're pretty close to the women I actually wrote. Like, uh, they're very, very, very intelligent women. Um, one of them's modeled after uh, the, uh, the famous hardware geek chick, Jerry Ellsworth, who is, is one of the hardware people for Steam. Another one's, uh, I mean, they're all... They're all crazy smart women. One of them, uh, like the lead lead character, actually, for his side job, because a lot of the actors are unknowns, so he has to have a side job, but hopefully this will end that. But uh, his side job is to design, build, and maintain websites for people. Not quite as hardcore as actually hacking, but, I mean, that's what he really does. The, the, the woman who's going to be playing Bitchon is one of the chief evangelists for Riot Software for, uh, I, don't, I don't remember their big game, but that's what she does for a living. The other one's huge with Blizzard. Um, another one's on a, regularly on a show called The Nerdist. So these women like are, really are stunningly attractive and crazy geek smart. So they exist, guys. Don't give up. Yeah, that was, that, that was one of my main reasons for resisting uh, the nudity and sexuality is because not, not because I think it's bad. I think it has its place. But I wanted to focus on not being exploitative about the, the female body and showing that, that they are equal. The difference is the exterior. It's not what's on, going on inside. And so uh, I, I wouldn't budge on that one. Kickstarter is an all-or-nothing campaign. Right now, we're at about 29%. We have eight days left to reach 50 grand, which is a lot of money for me, but for all of us together, it's not very much money at all. So please come and contribute and help me make it happen. I can't make this without you, but I'm making it for you. So uh, lend a hand, please. Um, all the everybody involved really wants this to happen, and they're not getting paid millions of dollars. So they're they're almost doing it out of charity. They still are getting paid. I'm not keeping a cent of the the money. I'm taking all mine out of the back end. But um, that's yeah. So I think you'll like it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make a movie that's. I mean, I have high standards for it. I didn't like hackers either. I loved war games. That's the best hacker movie I've ever seen. And that's the kind of movie that I want to make.